Hello, and welcome to my talk, How versus What? Choices in Games, the Case of Audio Games. First of all, who am I? I'm Ranko Drivkovic, also known as uh, Grandpa Tiger. I'm a game designer, uh, game producer, but before that I was a journalist and uh, for games, novelist, creative writing teacher. And I decided to marry my two passions and become a narrative designer. Of course, narrative designer nowadays is a bit <clears throat> like a cover for game writers because uh, it sounds more fancy than uh, a game writer and game writers are sadly on the bottom of chain, uh, food chain <laughs> game industry. Um, I would like to think of myself as a game architect, you know, the one who creates uh, structures and, and builds powerful stories intertwined with gameplay. But when I'm not teaching narrative design, I'm mostly a narrative plumber. You know, they call me when the stuff starts leaking out to save the game and save a story. Um, okay, oh, one word before we continue, uh, my marketing manager will kill me if I don't mention that Grandpa's narrative design is part of the Red Leaking um, game studio. You can find us there. And a big shout out to E-Reality. I'm joined, I've joined their team uh, this year, earlier this year, as a story coach. Uh, E-Reality is a storytelling content management system for voice. Uh, they provide uh, business solutions for trainings and audio, um, audio experiences um, in marketing as well, everywhere where storytelling is important. But also they're running the Twist Tales interactive audiobooks for smart audio devices like Alexa and Bixby. Bixby. And they have built a very, very neat uh, uh, Twist engine, which is quite um, elegant and useful for writers, uh, especially for those who, who don't have previous uh, game design or game writing experience uh, or don't come from like Twine or some, something else. So what's the interactive storytelling? First of all, I want to say that interactive storytelling is exactly that, in the sense that it's not necessarily connected to uh, writing. Uh, when I say interactive storytelling, I don't mean just um, text-based games. Uh, interactive storytelling is basically every time um, you as a player have input and you're receiving feedback, uh, that's usually what games are about. And interactive storytelling can be uh, done through gameplay elements, uh, 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 controls, uh, video, audio, um, so all kind of multimedia. Uh, so much of what I'm speaking today is not only pertaining to a small niche like uh, interactive fiction or role-playing games, it's meant for every kind of storytelling. Specifically, I divide, uh, when it comes to writing, I divide like writing a game, which means uh, writing interactive fiction, visual novel, or any kind of uh, gameplay where a reading and making choices is the game. So there are a lot of games, uh, choices, uh, popular on episodes or similar popular on mobile phones now, uh, which are basically consumed by reading, 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 and then making a choice. So writing a game, when I say writing a game, I mean that. Writing for a game is a bit more complex because writing for a game can be just you know providing a, a lore or um, dialogues or, or just an element uh, used in a, in a game. Uh, but also writing for a game, again, includes choices because uh, often in strategy games, uh, 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 in uh, role-playing games, even in shooters, there are some forks in the path, there are some choices that can take the story here or there. There are some uh, um, uh, uh, moments where it matters what the player decides. Speaking of choices, I think that games generally are, you know, like uh, making interesting choices. So starting from, I don't know, Tetris, where the bricks fall, down the sky, it's an interesting choice whether you go left or right, where you accelerate or, or twist. Uh, even in Super Mario, with, with those uh, three or four ways to jump, interesting choices when, where, what jump to use. So basically, 
uh, in a broader sense, all games are about interesting choices. So what is the problem of choices in writing uh, for games or writing a game? The problem is that choice is ra rather not isolated situation. So usually uh, when you say a choice, you mean, oh, uh, options I've been given, like where do I proceed from here? But when I say choices, I will use especially a uh, word choice station, which means things that led towards this choice, the question before you're giving some options, the, the wording and the consequences of the options themselves and the aftermath. And when I speak about what and how choices, it's important to um, have in mind the totality, the choice station of it, because uh, the choice of your choices huh, um, will also affect your story uh, in sense of the structure. And also different approaches are suitable for different structures. We'll go through all of this. Uh, specifically, a writing choices uh, has three components like the writer's problems, uh, how is the question phrased? Uh, what is written before the choice comes? Uh, what is the wording of the choice? What feedback uh, in sense of dialogue or, or words or actions uh, uh, follows? There is a game design problem of choices like what kind of variables are assigned at each choice station? What kind of variables are checked at each choice station? What kind of um, uh, 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 game flow structure uh, is going to happen? before and after the, the particular choice, and uh, what's the pacing, of course, of the choices. All of these problems, um, of course, are uh, narrative design problems because you need to uh, combine a story with the gameplay. You have to think about a player as a reader, but also a player as um, someone who's uh, here for the gameplay. So like doing this mechanical stuff. When I asked my uh, project manager for e-reality, e Jörg, uh, what's the, like, the best game we can showcase? He, he said, like, well, well, the best written or the best designed or the most interesting mechanics. So all these problems um, uh, in, 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 are intertwined, of course. And uh, that's why if you want to test your merit as a narrative designer, Writing for audio is really great start, a thing and writing interactive uh, fiction uh, in general. Um, especially because in, uh, in my experience, writers always a bit struggle, writers who come from traditional media struggle a bit with this non-linearity, uh, which is not so strange because we perceive the stories as linear. Uh, uh, I mean, I'm addressing you now and you're listening to my speech if I, was, if I would be a lot uh, uh, non-linear jumping from po uh, node to node, it would be quite confusing for our you know, attention. But also game designers and producers, they're more capable of crafting nice uh, uh, game flow, but sometimes they can uh, treat choices as purely game design a matter, and it's not. It's also a, a writer's problem. So... Uh, <clears throat> to, before we go into what makes an interesting choice, uh, let's also again clarify that choice is uh, a, a choice that the player makes in the game. It doesn't have to be a story branch. So uh, a story doesn't need, need to diverge or, or, or branch out after a choice. Of course, the, this um, propensity on, or this uh, uh, quality of choices can make them tricky in the sense that Sometimes they can be, you know, too, too much uh, uh, fluff, too, too fake choice. So uh, the player can have the idea that nothing is actually moving after a choice. But the other part of the problem is that uh, choices, if they're viewed necessarily as story branch, they can, you know, explode your story and um, you soon can have more to write than you planned. So, um, First element of, uh, of an interesting choice is being relevant. Uh, just as uh, uh, Hitchcock said, uh, drama is uh, boring bits cut out from life. So a life with, without the boring bits. I would say that the same goes for uh, video games and for writing in games. So choices need first and above all to be relevant. Of course, what is a relevant choice has four uh, different elements, I'll dissect it. But um, relevance primarily also depends on, uh, 
of course, your genre and your plot and your theme. I mean, in a survival game, of course, it does make sense to you know, uh, um, keep track of uh, how many times player pooped or something, or player's character, actually. And that's a bit better than a player itself. Uh, I don't know, in a shooting game, it doesn't really, it's not really important to, to know if the, you know, Master Chief has, has had his breakfast or not. He's just there to kill the aliens. While in some, I don't know, slice of life kind of game, it does make sense to, you know, wait for the bus, uh, pick pennies, come pennies or whatever. So that out of the way, choices need to be informed. Choices need to be meaningful. Choices need to be consequent and properly framed. Informed choices means do uh, you have enough information to make the choice? One of the early mistakes for young writers is to like make a mysterious choice. Like, where do you go? Do you open top drawer or bottom drawer? Do you go left or right? Are you for Gumbugam or are you for Afghan Gump? Without explanation, without previous uh, information, without any hint as to what might uh, uh, expect you after each choice, it soon turns into like pure random decision. And that's not good for immersion because your players will want to save the game, move forward, you know, uh, reload, move in the other direction, reload, and on that make a choice. And that kills the immersion. It simply destroys the immersion. So uh, to be relevant, a choice needs to be informed. So the player needs to know, or at least uh, have some idea uh, what uh, information is available, what uh, to expect. Yes, uh, 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 subverting players' expectations is always great, especially in writing, and it's fun, but don't push your players to make random choices. The choice needs to be meaningful, and this is very important because uh, often uh, gameplay uh, constrictions will require you to write a lot of choices. For example, in audio games, uh, because of the specifics of the of the uh, format and of the media, we prefer to have like 30 seconds, 40 seconds between choices, not uh, uh, longer. Uh, and this constriction, of course, breeds some creativity, but also is a restrictive thing. So you, you have to write choices, which will not be just to pass time or to just to, to pass some checkpoint. You need to have choices that really contribute to the story, to the drama, to the excitement. So what's the stake? Um, how this choice affects the story afterwards. Uh, it's similar to writing dialogues. You know, a lot of writers think that a dialogue needs to be, you know, flowing. It needs to be, it needs to sound natural. But if the dialogue doesn't contribute to the storyline, if it doesn't propel the story forward, if it doesn't create some information that we can gather from the dialogue, then, then it's meaningless and it's just nicely written, uh, naturally sounding dialogue. So always ask yourself, does this trick contribute something or is it just there to pass time? Uh, because it's probably not gonna be that interesting. So consequent, will the outcome matter? And this is um, very important because um, as I said, the choices are not the isolated ABC, you know, options that you take. The choices are the whole choice station and they affect the whole structure. So will the outcome matter can be described like, will I get immediate feedback after I make a choice? Will the game acknowledge, will the game signal to me? Those who come from game design background know what I mean with this, uh, you know, feedbacks and signals. Uh, also, will my uh, choices create difference in the game space, uh, in the world of game? Will it affect something? Will it change something? Someone's attitude towards me or some physical manifestation in the game world? Or again, um, there is like uh, short-term consequences, mid-term consequences, like buildup of consequences that in, in, in some end game decides what, what, what ending you get. And also, of course, there's this long play uh, uh, consequences, which are like planted early and reaped much later. That's a great um, tip for writing fiction in general. Like if you foreshadow or if you plant an information early where it's still not clear how important it is, and then boom, in the end, it just explodes with importance. Um, 
I know a lot of people don't like the movie Solo, but it's it's a nice example of this kind of foreshadowing when you see sort of the whole plot of the movie explained or displayed in the first five, 10 minutes, and then bam, it really happens uh, as you've already sort of got the glimpse of, but you cannot imagine that it will play out exactly like that, exactly so amazing like that. So mm, I always uh, ask my uh, writers to think about these consequences and they also can be taken in the spirit of what versus how. I'll explain it later, of course. And properly framed uh, is, um, Pertaining to like, does the wording of the choice match the consequence? So is, am I going to get what I've subscribed for? But it's not only about the wording, it's about the way you enter your choice. Like, do I click, do I um, write, do I type something to be parsed? Do I, uh, do I get this little uh, 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 transparent uh, uh, variable? Like, oh, you cannot unlock this uh, dialogue because you don't have enough charisma or like, oh, if you pick this choice, you'll get this kind of bonus. Uh, sometimes it's appropriate, sometimes it's not. For example, in audio games, um, due to the specific nature uh, of gameplay, we always tend to inform a player if this next choice is going to contain an element of uh, randomness. So like, if there's a dice roll involved, we'll let you know. Because, uh, um, of course, uh, some choices could be affected by random or, or dice roll or some sort of check like that. But uh, um, in audio game, it's very important to sort of give this, uh, this kind of knowledge. So you have to ask yourself, what kind of information is going to keep my player immersed? Because hiding information is not always, does not always equal uh, um, immersion. Sometimes you get your player to be more immersed by wanting to stick with the choice. That's very uh, important uh, uh, characteristic of a choice. You want to have uh, choices which your player embrace, which they don't regret, which they go for and don't ask themselves like, what would happen if I pick differently, unless they want to you know, go for the full replay. Uh, pacing, of course, very important. And pacing doesn't have any formula like, even, even with the reality, we say 20 to 40 seconds between choices, but sometimes it's like a minute. Uh, longer than that is really long. Like if you've ever, you know, listened to a, a voice message that's more than a minute long, you know what I mean. So um, in a big game, a novel sized game, I don't know, Witcher 3, you have, uh, you don't need to have choices like every uh, moment, every other second. Um, you can go by chapters. I don't know. In interactive fiction, it's not uncommon to have like a full chapter and then choices, or like to have four choices in a chapter, or like one page or half page between uh, between choices. When you're doing a, 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 I don't know strategy game, the choices can be paced like after each battle or before each battle, and it's a format that's uh, um, quite nice in my view. For example, for, uh, particularly for the strategic games, but always think of like, what is your narrative space? Uh, do I have space to, to, to place any narrative inside or my gameplay elements will narrate? For example, in a game like RimWorld, the entire gameplay tells a story. So there's no need for like dialogues or something to, to cramp uh, and slow down um, the game because narrative space is filled with gameplay elements. Values, so, a uh, very important thing for uh, 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 crafting an interesting choice. So do the variables and conditions match the story, particularly the theme and the plot? So hear me out. Often when I see a writer think of a plot, they don't usually think about the theme, like what's the theme? So the plot can be a bit all over the place. But the first consequences of this is that um, they go for default, like good, neutral, evil choice or like brute, uh, uh, smart, uh, sneaky. Th th those are like default choices. And um, although they are or can be part of the how, how choice uh, uh, mindset, they don't really need to or, or don't, don't really necessarily uh, are applicable to every story. So you need to see what thematical elements are important for this story. Um, I don't know. 
for example, if it's a, a escape kind of game, like let's escape from the sinking ship, uh, what values can be checked throughout the story? Like, are you selfish? Are you altruistic? Uh, uh, how do you find the balance? Is there a balance at all, or you're just either or? Um, is there like, uh, uh, is there, are there some relatives uh, on your on your ship? So you, you like want to save them too. Uh, time can be very important. So we had a game uh, which was um, quite well, boring because it was just a simple um, find your way out of the sinking ship kind of what game, what choices are predominant. And then we added a time as a variable, like a ticking clock, like, okay, this choice is going to take you this much time, but maybe it will open some new venues. So there was always an interesting dynamic on how do you navigate the ship. And you notice even now, like how versus what, how how uh, the how mindset improves uh, the game. Of course, I'll talk about particular games later. So um, before we uh, go on, exactly because the choice is part of the structure, and it's very important for me to explain to you that structure is double, like there are two layers, the story structure and the game flow structure. And the way you craft your choices can immensely uh, uh, improve your game because, for example, this diamond is often called the fake choice structure. But it's not inherently evil. You can use it. It's not really bad, especially because it keeps your story sort of together, your story flow uh, together. You don't you know, diverge too much. So your gameplay and your story can be more um, focused. Um, it can be used for, to create effect to create atmosphere. That's why it's of all of sometimes called fluff choice structure. And um, oh, sorry. And uh, yeah, the, if if it's about uh, what choice, this would be um, fake choice basically. Because what do you want to do, and then the both things uh, drive you to the same ending. That's kind of you know disappointing, but if you use the how choice, like how do you approach a problem, then these two different uh, paths can make a big difference in the, in the view of a player, and therefore um, create better crafted, more focused story, uh, more interesting choice for your player, and um, country uh, on the other side you just have a you know fake choice that no one likes. Uh, this is the case, uh, typical case of diverging or a branching story, also called the time cave, uh, when it's used to you know uh, describe the whole story. Um, and of course, you know you have branching, and then this branching have more branches, and then it becomes a, a hell for for a writer. Why? Because eventually, either you want to you know put the story together at some choke point. And then you have problem like, oh, this happened here, but this didn't happen. Uh, what kind of uh, continuation is canon? How do I mention without mentioning it? Especially if you're creating an episodes, like we have for, for audio games, like you kind of need to wrap it up somehow so that the episode can continue. But in the same time, you want to have different endings. You want to have uh, varied endings. Um, if you don't, want to co combine your story back to a single point, then you have problem of like writing huge variety. And it's not only about, you know, content and filling up the content. It's about um, danger of losing your focus in sense of story uh, for a theme and plot. So, you know, by ex letting the player explore and move, you know, and, and just, you know, disperse, um, go away from the main story plot, it can happen that uh, uh, you simply have three stories in one, which is not bad, but if they're thematically connected, then it's good. So while uh, uh, this structure as a game flow is good, as a story flow, I would say it, it can be problematic. And that's again where how choices um, uh, support you, because basically in this story structure, you could have like the same uh, storyline explained, the same storyline happens, but with differences affected by how a player, how a player acts. So basically you have like three variations within the same um, 
general plot, so to speak. So when you combine the story back, it's not uh, impossible. It's not divert, too divert. And this is the gauntlet. It's um, rarely used, but it could be, it can be quite effective. So the gauntlet is basically, you know, like choices which uh, which eliminate player. So these uh, little circles uh, describe the dead ends, and we don't like them in audio because, you know, if I call Alexa and I expect story story to last like five or 15 minutes i want to experience it through and through uh, i don't feel like you know when i'm interrupted or dead especially for audio you, you'll see later why uh, being dead is you know informed that your dead is not really pleasant experience however this structure is really cool if you want to create like brief moment of excitement if replayability is okay if a roguelike sort of element is present, and then the player can have immense satisfaction, like, wow, I went through this gauntlet. But again, uh, although this is like more suited to what choices, because what you did can affect the thing, it can also be uh, used in a how choice situation. So audio games, finally, what are the audio games and why are they a great teacher? Audio games are basically interactive um, uh, stories uh, but not just game books it's not like a choose your adventure only they really have uh, uh, some sort of mechanics puzzles they're like regular games but they are enjoyed through alexa bixby and other um, smart uh, devices smart audio devices and you play them by listening and then providing answers and then you know unlocking the the next scene and because uh, the audio is intense, the audio is um, demanding on your focus, and audio is also emotionally uh, impactful, uh, our experience is that like 15 minute gameplay time or like 30, 45 minute total uh, with all the variations gameplay uh, time is quite enough, quite interesting, quite a good uh, uh, sweet spot. So to speak, although we have like a short games, five minute games, which you can play like while you're driving your car. Um, and audio games, because of the audio format, have different you know limits and benefits. One of the limits is uh, the narrative space. So you have 15 minutes to tell all of your story. Introduction, um, if there's a fantasy world or some special kind of rules of the world, what are, what are they? Characters, you need to immediately have them introduced. Who am I? Uh, who, immediately needs to be, you know, snappy. Um, uh, because uh, uh, we want our players to listen to brief scenes, uh, a writer has only like 30 seconds to explain everything they want, to, to paint a picture, to bring a player into this emotion, to invite the player in the game. Um, then we want the player to interact. So uh, narrative space is chopped in these little uh, you know, 30 second uh, scenes where you have to have some sort of choice between them. So um, you don't have a lot of space. Mm, it's similar to like comparing, I don't know, a, a novel to a short story. In a short story, it needs to be very fast. While in novel, you can meander, you can have diverging episodes and, and so on. The limited replayability is a very interesting uh, 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 quality, which I wasn't aware before I started uh, working for in reality. Namely, uh, because of the intensity of audio experience, uh, and because I have to listen to a certain number of scenes before I start making, you know, like really impactful choices before before the story really starts branching out. A lot of players are reluctant to have uh, to replay the game. So you want to create your story, you know, to be fun then and there, to really grip, each choice has to grip the player, to, to entrust to the player that, you know, uh, uh, what I make in this choice will really be consequent, will be meaningful. Because readers um, or players, they, they trust you. They don't question your skill. If you present them with something, uh, they don't question, like, oh, what is this? They want to believe in you. I, I remember I played a, a, a game, um, very poorly written interactive fiction game, when I was given option to act carefully or to act brashly. And then I picked to act carefully, and then it turns out that my sidekick was killed because they were reckless. And I was like, what? Uh, this is not what I subscribed for. This is not like what I expected. I mean, it's um, okay, sure, things can happen, but um, it really kills 
my trust that uh, uh, further choices will be really uh, well 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 crafted. And because of the reply, uh, low replayability, you need to craft them as best as you can. Um, of course, um, even in the games uh, where they are replayability, you do want to keep the immersion and, and prevent player from like saving and reloading. Um, also, uh, the, the, uh, in audio, there are limited multimedia effects, like you only have audio. Uh, so the audio is your vision and your feeling and your touch and your action, everything is there. However, of course, uh, 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 as I said, uh, it brings greater immersion. It means greater emotional impact, which is why our players don't like to you know, be killed in the middle of the story. And since they're not distracted, since they are focused on listening, you have their full attention. I, I have a many young friends who are like, you know, they put on a game on PC and then they you know, play a game on mobile phone in the same time because both games actually don't need uh, some special focus from just from time to time. And that's why audio games are a great teacher because they uh, demand a lot of skill. If you want to check if you're if you're cut to be a narrative designer, try your hand at audio writing audio games. Uh, but also audio games bring a lot of best practices for interactive storytelling. That really, for me, even a great teacher. So what are the what choices? The what choices are you know what do you do? Um, and it's it's not only about particular choice; it's about the structure of the game as well. So, um, what what happens in your game? That's that's a, 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 a what choices based game. What action does your character take? Where do you want to go? Where what next? Um, good sides of what choices are that they are uh, by nature direct action. They are encouraging exploring. And they're, they can be very clear and precise. Like you take a gun, you take axe, that's your choice. There's no like hidden meaning behind it. Well, they could be, but most of the time it's like direct action. So there's no, uh, there's a lot of clarity. Um, so for example, if I ask you like, do you want to go to the left door, right door, or middle door? That's a typical what choice. And it's quite a challenge to inform them and keep them interesting at the same time. But also, the biggest challenge is that you know they tend to split your story. So emotions are not always implied. Character can be detached. Like I can do this no matter who am I as a character. And in audio games, it's very important to you know uh, as soon as possible merge uh, your um, character with your player. And also, it leads to heavy branching. So like a word choice is not only as a, as a choice station, but also as a principle of approaching a structure they tend to you know lead towards heavy branching and then this heavy branching tend to lead towards choke points and then these choke points are moments where player says oh a choke point of, of course i've reached you know this spot especially if, if there's a replayability involved how choice uh, as you have guessed are how do you proceed like what is your approach uh, what is your thought emotion or experience you're bringing into this section um, what quality or characteristics are you displaying while taking this action? So, for example, instead of like three doors, I can ask you like, how do you open this one door? And you can say like, oh, I want to bash it down like a, like a, a barbarian. Oh, I want to cast a spell and open it uh, like a magician. Oh, I want to pick the lock and open it like a, like a rope. And you see, in terms of story, the same thing happens after each choice, like you enter the room, but the consequence is vastly different and vastly interesting. Like at one hand, you can be like, oh, whoa, whoa, what are you doing, barbarian? You know, don't, don't smash doors like that. Or it can be like, oh, a fellow magician, welcome. I see you're, you know, smart in the use of magic. Or it can be like, oh, you're sneaky. Good to know. Come with me on an adventure. So uh, it brings this personalized experience. It brings character together with an action. And while the story flow branches out, the story, the story flow doesn't need to. You can still tell a different variants of the story. So when you combine them, it's not a choke point and it's not like bland or blank or like uh, neutral. It can be uh, quite, uh, quite uh, 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 fully written uh, and still uh, not affect like um, 
what kind of different choices player player made in the in the, in the in earlier, and yeah, so these are the, the the pro points. So it creates personal connection, it, which boosts immersion. It makes player more invested in an action, more motivated to take an action, and of course, each action builds the character, which is also the purpose of these kind of games. And sometimes it's not exactly suitable, like when when you do want uh, heavy branching. Um, one of the downsides is that it demands a better writer, it demands more clarity, it demands more preparation, it demands clear idea what's your team, what's your plot. It's not for ad hoc writing, you know. So um, we have several games which were vastly improved by not only crafting individual choices in how manner, but also approaching the whole uh, story design. For example, uh, we have this Guns and Gangsters. <clears throat> it's going to be published on um, Amazon soon. So the player takes role of a new mob boss, and it used to be about what? What do you do? Do you shoot? Do you hide? Do you kill? And then, like, the story goes on, but, you know, in one branch, the guy was killed, and the other one, it's not like, how do you, you know, do you keep them per permanently diverged or not? And because of the narrow narrative space, you cannot really have a lot of this kind of divergence. So we created uh, the game to have tighter how choices, like to... Uh, we, uh, you can also do it by, uh, by crafting uh, uh, clear uh, values for your player. Like, do they want to be a leader of a traditional mob or like, uh, I don't know, new mob, some sort of new, new, new innovative uh, approach, or do they want to be like brutal or, or, or diplomatic? And then there we crafted the characters which are representatives of this new mode. So the player's actions are always geared towards how choices, which brings you to the high point of the game where you decide who's going to be your next uh, assistant, who's going to be next um, uh, consigliere. And um, it's, of course, going to be the one which reflects how you went through the game. And then it will shape the sort of, to say, uh, 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 your organization. And then, because this will be serialized, and then in the next episode, the events are the same. I mean, uh, inauguration happened, uh, dinner with bosses happened, your acceptance as a mob boss happened, but the shape of your game is your personalized choice and will carry on to the next episode. And that's how the how approach vastly improved the whole game. Princess Centaur uh, is a really uh, <clears throat> great game. I like it because um, it places player in the role of a human half human, half centaur, we, and, and, and the princess can like shift between the shapes, decide like what shape she wants. Initially, it was like a D&D &D story. It was like a, a really divergent, lots of exploration, lots of characters, lots of different choices. But then a how choices crafted it into more tight experience. For example, um, uh, instead of what happens when I you know, pick, I don't know, spear over sword, it's how do I wield the spear and the sword. What's the spirit of the sword and the and the and the and the spear? How do they affect my character? How my decisions, who's going to be my bodyguard, the companion, shapes um, my values? Uh, because it's ultimately a story about um, discovering yourself and uh, de deciding what kind of heritage you want to embrace, like human or centaur or mixed, and. Um, uh, so instead of being like all over the place, uh, huge, uh, uh, unfocused uh, uh, adventure, it's it's really uh, it's really going to be a tight uh, game in which player grows with every choice, discovers with every choice, and then uh, settles in, in in these new choices and gets ready for the next uh, next episode. Um, Shadow Walkers. The, this one a project is really dear to me because as many action stories, it starts like um, quite unmotivated. So I see a lot of action uh, stories and a lot of horror stories totally unmotivated. Like, why would I do this? Why would I go through this? So a player is here in the role of a barbarian, sort of Iron Age, not on the planet Earth, but sort of similar with some sort of romance. So you're fighting these quasi-Romans and then aliens appear, disrupting everything. And it used to be quite unmotivated, like, why would I do this? What's the end goal? But then uh, we added how choices, 
like are you more of a survivalist or more of a um, uh, tribally oriented or like are you chasing personal vendetta so each situation is not only taking action but it's also um, building your character so to speak so you can um, if you hide or if you fight it's not about being brave or not brave but the collection of these choices uh, build your character in sense of how do you react how do you uh, strategize how do you move through the story and then it creates a situation where you in the end it's it's very clear why did i get this kind of ending and motivation is fulfilled it's no longer just you know uh, mindless action where you just run away from aliens because uh, audio game is not really suited for um, uh, this kind of visceral experience in terms of sheer action of course that's why uh, shooters exist and 3d games exist but we managed to keep the intensity of the action because combining it with a motiv stronger motivation through how choices the player really connects and the player is really immersed and and an action even though it's not visual it's intense and it brings this uh, sense of purpose uh, which again does wonders for uh, um, interesting choices. And last but not least is a stolen birthright, um, uh, a quite a nice example because this is a story structure really suited for uh, how choices. Namely, it's a, a bit of romantic slice of life kind of story where player is a princess or you know suspect to be a princess, and they're kept uh, kept uh, in a convent. Um, and the, the amazing thing here is that. Uh, a writer who's not experienced in interactive fiction took what choices in a game where there's not really not much action. So he 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 ended up, you know, he he managed not to create like um, empty action, like something that's going on just to be for the sake of going on. But then he ended with the long long passages of like not even the dialogue, just passages and passages of info dump of. Um, 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 text or of, of, of descriptions so um especially because this kind of slice of life game doesn't have a, a room for much action that's why we turn uh, all the choices into hard choices so uh, and then suddenly instead of like escape from convent kind of game it became like a game of exploration uh, of yourself of finding your voice of finding a balance between you know respecting the authority and rebelling uh, against it for your freedom for the sake of your survival and uh, we crafted it so that uh, uh, the long passages of or long scenes are intersected with dialogues and these dialogues matter how you address how you receive information and then even the info dump because this is like intro episode the info dump is gone because instead of like taking 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 informations you are discovering the information um, by, you know, uh, your interest, what interests you, what kind of personality you're building slowly, and that's the kind of uh, relevant info that flows to you. So uh, I, I really, really uh, can't wait for this one to, to be out. Um, <clears throat> so uh, thank you for your attention. If uh, you want to try your hand at writing audio games, uh, do write to uh, info at irreality.de. If you want to have your story fixed or, I don't know, learn how to write for games or write games, uh, you can contact me. Um, I'm um, ready for your questions and um, feel free, free, free to ping me on uh, any social media. Uh, thank you again for attention and thank uh, thanks to organizers for having me uh, on this event.